Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. I have recently been watching an excellent channel about Roman history that focuses on an often neglected era. Everyone studies the rise of the Roman Republic to expound the reasons it grew to such greatness, but few focus as much of their attention and talent on what made it fall. Oh, you'll get the historical troll blaming it on whichever religious group, social class, or other aspect of Roman society they don't like. But I wonder more often about the people of that time. Do you think a Roman citizen early in the history of the Republic, around 750 BCE, had any idea that they were seeing firsthand the birth of a culture that would survive for over a thousand years? And do you think that those living around 475 CE could imagine that what had survived for so long could soon be gone forever. That so much of their knowledge, philosophy, and science would be cast aside. The libraries burned and the learned executed in the name of one new ideology or another. I would argue that none of them could see the bigger picture. They were just trying to get by doing their work, caring for their families, learning what they could during their short time on this earth. I doubt if any would have believed that in less time than their empire had stood, no one would even speak their language as they had, that an age of darkness and ignorance would descend, setting humanity back over a thousand years. And we must ask ourselves, where are we in our time? Are we at the start of a great beginning? Or are we seeing the last flickering light of reason being snuffed out, like a candle in the dark? As he lay dying from the ravages of cancer, Carl Sagan did not fear for himself. He feared for humanity. He feared that society would fall back and once again create a demon-haunted world. Carl Sagan was born in 1934 in New York City. His father had immigrated from the Russian Empire in what is now Ukraine. His mother had been born in New York. Sagan was born into the Jewish faith. He would have been seven years old when Pearl Harbor was attacked, and eleven when World War II ended. As he reached the age of thirteen and prepared for his bar mitzvah, a coming-of-age ceremony in Judaism, he would have learned of the millions lost in the death camps. And perhaps this caused him to not trust in the existence of a universal benevolence. He might have thought, if one is out there, great, but don't count on it. Carl turned to reason and science. But as he learned the tools of skepticism and logic, he maintained a sense of awe and wonder at the complexity of the universe. And it cannot be said that he ever used his intellectual gifts to belittle those less fortunate. During his childhood, he would have experienced what most recognize as the first golden age of science fiction, 1938 to 1946. And all those wonderful collections of short stories, like Amazing Stories and Astounding Science Fiction, would be cheap in the secondhand bookstores. These would have prepared him for what he saw as a young man. We know that, along with the works of Plato, as he was getting ready for college, he read the star science fiction stories of Frederick Pohl. He would have been around 19 years old when the first satellite went into orbit. 31 when humanity took its first step on the moon. And only 34 when it took its last. He was only 62 years old when he died. But in those years, he had seen amazing progress and terrible destruction. It is obvious from his next to last book that he feared that he had lived not at the beginning of a golden age, but at the end of one. He wrote this book to warn us. But knowing that he would soon be dead, he wrote one more. A book about his journey, about the awe he felt contemplating the universe, about hope. 
Carl died a quarter of a century ago. I read his books as a child and try to be a student of science and history. But I can't tell you. If we are at the beginning of a golden age of advancement, or if we are reaching the end of an era of progress, I see so much hatred in spite, even from educated and powerful people, focused on those who are trying to make our dreams a reality. We started this channel so that we could do our part, to make our time the beginning of an age of exploration and expansion into the solar system. To make the subject of space science understandable and enjoyable. To fight against those who would hold us all back by saying it can't be done. Skepticism can be a wonderful tool when it's wielded with kindness. The fact that you are watching this makes me believe that you have hope. We do too, and we hope that together we can build something enduring. By the way, I have a link to Majorianus in the description, and if you are interested in investing in the space industry, I recommend listening to this young man. He is currently studying at Harvard and does his research, analyzing what the skeptics have to say. I'm not saying you should listen to him because he's at Harvard. I'm saying he's at Harvard because you should listen to him. I'll put a link to his channel in the description also. And now watch what I believe to be our modern equivalent of those wonderful short stories that Carl Sagan liked so much to read. While the authors of his books used words to paint pictures of the future in Carl's mind, artists like Seabass, Eric X, and Alex Svahn use pixels to do the same for us. I recently came across this one by Velen 3 d I hope you enjoy it, and a special thanks to those who help support us on Patreon. We appreciate you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay safe. At Astra Proterra.